Hello everyone, it's Janelle and I am so excited to be here with you guys. I know it's been so long since my last Facebook Live. Since the last time that we connected, I was just about nine months pregnant and since then have given birth to little baby girl Zoe. She's doing really well and she'll be four months tomorrow. And so you know, we're trying to get into that routine of life with a newborn and a toddler and just trying to, um, you know, get back to work because I've really been missing connecting with people um, both here talking about how to talk to your kids about sex with confidence, clarity, and purpose, and then with my other health education business, Project School Wellness. So today I just wanted to connect with you and talk about a blog post that I published, I believe last week, all about how we can talk to our kids about sex in a way that's much more effective and impactful and meaningful than conversations that we heard growing up. So in this short live, hopefully it's gonna be short, I just wanna share five ways that we can talk to our kids or specifically that my husband and I are working to talk to our children that's drastically different than our childhoods. So after teaching sex ed for a decade, you know, there's there's lots of different things that I want to impart to my kids, but just wanted to narrow it down to specifically five strategies that I'm really that we're really focusing on our home to reimagine how we give the talk and how we intentionally work to raise sexually healthy children. So real quick, let me just get set up here. Okay. So the first thing that we are focusing on is um, the first strategy or way um, is that we want to talk about sexual health in a way that doesn't just focus on sex. So basically, number one is that sexual health is about so much more than having sex. So growing up, our the idea of being sexually healthy really revolved around whether or not a person was engaging in vaginal intercourse. And basically the message was, if you aren't having vaginal intercourse outside of marriage, then you're good. Well, we know that it's much more complex than that. So the reimagined, the, the reimagined approach that we're taking is that we want our kids to teach our kids that sexual health is incredibly complex and that to raise sexually healthy children, we need to teach our kids that sexual health is holistic, that it's multifaceted, that it's comprehensive, and it's about so much more than who you're having sex with, when you're having sex, or if you're having good sex, and instead really helping them understand that being sexually healthy is about whether or not a person is able to enjoy and embrace their, sexual, their sexuality throughout life by doing things like building confidence in their body, identity, feelings, emotions, um, by nurturing and enriching relationships, by having exercising autonomy over their body and sexuality, by having this full and complete understanding of how the body works and, and then having the skills to make sure that it's operating at an optimal level. Also that we can engage in meaningful, pleasurable and healthy sexual experiences that honor and exemplify our values. And so, yeah, so basically number one is we want to teach that sexual health is about so much more than sex. Number two, we, <laughs> number two is that the talk isn't a single conversation about reproduction. Instead, the talk is really a lifelong dialogue about making enriching decisions and about learning how to fully embrace and enjoy our sexuality. So from our childhoods, um, a lot of us may, you know, we learned about sex from maybe one or two conversations, aka the talk about where babies came from, periods, maybe how not to get pregnant. It was so essentially the talk was very much this um, singular conversation about reproduction. So the reimagined the pro the reimagined approach that we want to take is that focusing on just the reality that raising sexually healthy children requires nuanced conversation, right? It's not just one or two conversations about how to have or about, you know, safer sex or waiting to have sex or using protection. It's it, instead, it's all about creating this um, safe space for us to have countless conversations throughout our kids' lives, right? And so we're not just focused on one conversation about reproduction, we're focused on creating this safe space for conversations throughout our child our child's life, you know, as they're 
pre-puberty, puberty, teenagers, and then even on into adulthood. Okay, number three is we're going to stop focusing on reproduction and start creating a more authentic picture of sexual health and why people choose to engage in sexual experiences. So growing up, we you know, well, it was evident that from the media or in the media that sex wasn't just about reproduction. Reproduction was all we heard about, you know, at school or maybe in church or from our parents about sex. The conversation fully focused on sex within the context of reproduction. So let's look at a reimagined approach. So real talk, there are very, very, very few times in life that people actually engage in sexual activity for the sole purpose of reproduction. You know, some people, they may never. And most of the time, people engage in sexual activity to express feelings, you know, to build, build connection or intimacy or just to experience pleasure. Sometimes, yes, to make babies, but mostly it's all about expressing feelings, building connection and intimacy and experiencing pleasure. So this means that if we frame sex only within the context of reproduction, it's really not an accurate depiction of sexual health. And it doesn't fully, it doesn't create a full picture for our children as they grow up and they, you know, begin to navigate these different areas of life on their own. So we really want to work at sharing a more authentic picture. And I know that, you know, maybe that is a little bit uncomfortable because we, it's sometimes easier to just focus on reproduction because it's so biological and it's just, you know, step one, step two, and then this is the outcome, but it's not very authentic. So we really need to work, what I really want to focus, focus on, and I do this with my students and doing this at home, is creating an authentic picture and um, making sure that, that people or kids understand that, that sex within the framework of reproduction is only a small piece of the story of sexual health. Don't get me wrong, reproduction is very important and kids definitely need to learn that, but that's only one lens and we want to make sure that our kids have a really full picture of sexual health. And number four, all parents are involved in the talk. So, you know, from our growing up, our childhoods, there's been a, and still I see this a lot, there's a reoccurring theme that when giving the talk, either there's one parent that kind of spearheads the whole conversation, or parents only talk to their kids or their children of the same gender. And this also happens at schools and at churches too, where you see like the male teacher taking the, you know, <laughs> the boys out and the female teacher taking the girls out and having these like gender um, only conversations. And so we want to change that and we want to have all parents involved in the talk. So again, our reimagined approach is all about talking, is, take, is talking about sexuality and sexual health make, and making it a family affair. So we want all caregivers, parents in on the conversation. And that also means that everyone, all parents and caregivers, you know, might have to do a little bit of inner work to be able to to be prepared to have that talk with kids, no matter what gender their children, their child is. So, and this is so important because, I mean, there's many reasons, but I'm just gonna highlight three reasons why it's really important that all parents are involved in the talk. So one, when all parents are in, and caregivers are involved in the talk, kids grow up with no shame or taboo talking about sexuality because everyone's involved. If someone is not involved in it, it can really create this, um, you know, it, it can it can send the message like, oh, this isn't okay to talk about this person, or this is only something that's okay in this setting. And so it really helps to just minimize the shame and the feelings of taboo if everyone's just involved in the talk. And then two, um, the more that kids talk with all caregivers and parents, the more that they build competencies for talking to different to people of different genders about sexual health topics. And since children will most likely engage in romantic and sexual relationships with someone of a different gender, you know, building these communication skills from a young age is critical. And then three, Kids grow up just understanding the reality that all people are sexual beings and that everyone has a unique sexuality and that sexuality is just this normal, natural part of life. And it just really helps them build that confidence in their identity and their body and their feelings and their emotions that can help them like live these just sexually healthy lives as they as they grow up. 
And then five is we want to focus more on building critical thinking and decision making skills and less on raising a rule follower with just a list of sexual do's and don'ts. So for many of us growing up, our sex ed experience was really just learning like a list of rules to follow. So it was maybe don't have sex until you're married. Um, don't watch pornography. Don't watch or don't masturbate. That's evil. So don't date until you're this age. Um, you know, don't wear that outfit. Or don't act like this or do that. It's just so many don'ts, right? And there's just don't, 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 don't. Here's the rules to follow. And if you follow these rules, you'll be sexually healthy. But life isn't quite that simple, right? We, everyone is different. Everyone lives different lives, has different wants, needs, values, boundaries, desires, all of these things. So instead of just focusing on raising a rule follower, we want to focus on developing critical thinking skills. We want to focus on building accurate, medically accurate knowledge and creating opportunities to nurture these decision making skills. So I, I don't want to, you know, I'm not trying to tell you what's wrong or right for your child in terms of like those examples of those rules, but we don't want, I do know that we don't want to just give kids a list of rules to follow because it really doesn't empower kids to be sexually healthy individuals. Instead, they become mindless rule followers or these rebellious rule breakers. And that doesn't really lead to sexually healthy decisions. Instead, we want to create a space where our kids can really know themselves so they can understand what their values are. They can understand what brings them joy and pleasure and happiness and connection and intimacy. And we want them to, you know, build the skills to express those different needs, wants and boundaries and values. So then they can go out and make really intentional and thoughtful decisions that lead to a life where they just feel joy and peace and happiness. So, yeah, so those are the five, the, those are the five things. Again, I'll just go over them real quick. We want to expand the conversation and talk about, because sexual health is about so much more than having sex. We want to recognize that the talk isn't a single conversation about reproduction. Instead, it's a lifelong dialogue. We want to stop focusing on reproduction because that's a very limited view of what sexual health is and it's not actually an authentic depiction of why people engage in sexual experiences. Four, we want all parents involved in the talk so that we can just, it, it, beca it truly becomes this safe space and that we learn to have these conversations with people, with all different types of people. And then five, we want to really intentionally focus on building critical thinking skills and decision making skills and less on rule following. So I'm not saying that we can't tell our we can't set expectations for our kids, but we want the focus to always be on how are we helping kids think critically about this? How are we building, you know, decision making skills so that we can lead to these outcomes where kids are able to make decisions that truly enrich their lives and don't lead to regrettable experiences. All right. So I'd love to hear from you in the chat. I'd love to hear, you know, what what are you doing? What are you what do you want to do that's different than maybe your parents did it? Um, you know, feel free to share your feelings, share your your thoughts in the chat or on in the Reimagining the Talk Facebook group. And be sure to check out um, Janelle Tay, T H E like the. <laughs> I'll I'll link to it in the description. Um, just check out the blog where I'm trying to share stuff every week, and I'm also going to try to start sharing, doing a Facebook Live every week, highlighting. Um, highlighting what's going on on the blog and then also taking time to answer questions from you guys either submitted from the email or on the, from the weekly email or on Facebook, whatever. So I hope that this was um, insightful for you. And I hope um, just that you, um, I just really, I guess I just really wish you well as you work to raise sexually healthy children. You know, I know that it can be challenging. I know that it can feel overwhelming. 
something that sometimes we don't feel like we have this path forward. We don't have this role model or guidance because maybe our parents didn't set that for us. Of course, no fault to them at all because most likely our grandparents weren't setting this setting the stage for them either. So um, yeah, I just wish you well on this. If you have any questions or comments, please connect. Please share this video if you found it useful. Share it with your friends. And yeah, I look forward to connecting in the next Facebook Live. Take care.